Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to do a fun game called Cannibals, which is a great application of backward induction. And I actually pulled this game out of a new book called Math Puzzles, Classic Riddles in Counting, Geometry, Probability, and Game Theory. It was written by the same guy who runs the MindYourDecisions.com blog. It's really interesting, and if you're into the type of stuff you see on this YouTube channel, you'll probably be interested in the things that you see in the book. So you can go ahead and check that book out. It is in the description to the video below the screen. Okay, so that out of the way, let's describe the game and solve for its equilibria. So the game looks like this. There are n cannibals, where the cannibals are numbered 1, 2, and so forth until you get to the last one. And there is one tourist. The tourist is not going to be a strategic actor in this game. Just the cannibals are going to have chances to move. And the moves go in order of the number of cannibals. So cannibal number one will decide whether to eat the tourist. And if cannibal number one chooses to eat the tourist, then he sort of leaves himself vulnerable to the other cannibal, the next cannibal. He's too busy eating the tourist, and so that's going to distract him and allow another cannibal, cannibal number two, to come in and eat him. So if cannibal number two chooses to eat cannibal number one, he can. And if cannibal number two chooses to eat cannibal number one, then that allows the third cannibal to go ahead and choose whether to eat the second cannibal, because now the second cannibal is eating, and he's vulnerable to the third cannibal. And it's just going to go on ad nauseum like that. So the game is going to continue until one of the following things happens. Either all of the cannibals are done, so basically cannibal, the last cannibal is the only cannibal left standing, or a cannibal chooses not to eat the cannibal before him. Or in the case with the first cannibal, the game could end with the first cannibal deciding not to eat the tourist. The payoffs are pretty straightforward. Cannibals primarily want to survive, and given survival, they want to be able to eat someone. The serious question is, does the tourist survive? And the way we're going to be able to solve for that is by using backward induction. Really, the trick to this game is figuring out how to use backward induction in a place where it's not necessarily straightforward and you don't have a game tree in front of you. So if you want to try to solve this one on your own, pause the video now and think about it. Otherwise, we are going to do it now. And my hint to you is that the best way of going through this, like the pirate game, is to think of smaller cases and work your way to bigger cases. So let's start with the smallest case possible. So here's the tourist, and here's one cannibal. These are both pictures of me. The cannibal is the one, of course, with blood dripping out of his mouth. All right, if there's only one cannibal, this game is sort of trivial. So when there's only one cannibal, the cannibal doesn't have to worry about another cannibal coming from behind him and eating him, which means his decision is just whether to eat the tourist or not, and he prefers eating someone to not eating someone, which means the tourist is going to die in this situation. But what about when there's more cannibals? What happens when there's two cannibals? Well, here the first cannibal has to be worried. Why is that? Well, if the second cannibal has an opportunity to move, the last cannibal moving doesn't ever have to worry about anyone coming and eating him afterward. He's the last one to act, which means if he has an opportunity to move, he can go ahead and eat cannibal number one, which means when cannibal one has an opportunity to move, his decision is this. He can eat the tourist and then be eaten by the cannibal number two, or he can just end the game. He can say, I'm not going to eat the tourist, end the game, and survive. Well, remember that cannibals prefer survival to death, which means that cannibal number one's best response here, given that cannibal number two is going to eat him, is going to be to not eat the tourist. And so in this case, when there are two cannibals, the tourist survives. And initially, you might think that the reason the tourist survives is because there are multiple cannibals now. But what's actually going to be the case is that the tourist's survival depends upon whether there are an odd or an even number of cannibals. When there are an odd number of cannibals, the tourist dies. When there are an even number of cannibals, the tourist survives. So why is that? Well, let's think about three. Now there are three cannibals here. Again, backward induction, we just go to the end of the game and work our way forward. The end of the game is when cannibal number three has an opportunity to eat cannibal number two. Again, the last cannibal doesn't have to worry about anyone eating him, so he is given free reign and he's going to eat cannibal number two. All right, well, what about cannibal number two's move? Cannibal number two knows that if he has an opportunity to move, that if he eats cannibal number one, cannibal number three is going to eat him. So his choices are die by trying to eat cannibal number one or survive by not eating cannibal number one. He prefers survival to eating cannibal number one and dying. So that means cannibal number two is not going to eat cannibal number one. And that allows cannibal number one to have free, free reign. He knows that cannibal number two is not going to follow and eat him because that's going to result in cannibal number three eating cannibal number two, which means cannibal number one's choice is either eat the tourist and survive or don't eat the tourist and survive. 
And Cannibal Number 1 prefers eating a tourist and surviving to not eating a tourist and surviving, which means the tourist dies. But when you get to fourth Cannibal, the result flips again. So this time, again, starting at the end of the game tree and working our way forward, the end of the game is when Cannibal Number 4 decides whether to eat Cannibal Number 3. Cannibal Number 4, the last one acting, doesn't have to worry about anyone eating him, so he, he eats Cannibal Number 3. Cannibal number three, when deciding whether to eat cannibal number two or not, knows that if he eats cannibal number two, then he dies. So that means cannibal number three is not going to eat cannibal number two. Which means when cannibal number two decides whether to eat cannibal number one, his decision looks like this. He either eats cannibal number one and survives, or doesn't eat cannibal number one and survives. Which means, well, he prefers eating someone and surviving to not eating someone and surviving, so he's going to eat cannibal number one. And when cannibal number one has to make a decision whether to eat the tourist or not, he knows that if he eats the tourist, then cannibal number two is going to eat him, which means cannibal one doesn't want to eat the tourist because he wants to survive, so this tourist survives in this case. Lastly, let's think about one more opportunity here for cannibal number five to act. So now when cannibal number five is here, if cannibal number five is the last one to act, which he is in this case, he knows that he doesn't have to worry about anyone following him, so he's going to eat cannibal number four. This is going to cause cannibal number four to not want to eat cannibal number three, knowing that if he eats cannibal number three, then he will die. So if cannibal number three knows that cannibal number four isn't going to eat him, that means cannibal number three is going to want to eat cannibal number two if he has an opportunity. But if cannibal number two knows that cannibal number, th number three is going to eat him, then cannibal number two is not going to want to eat cannibal number one. And so if cannibal number two is not going to eat cannibal number one, that allows cannibal number one to eat the tourist, and know that cannibal number two isn't going to uh, kill him afterwards. So that means the tourist dies, and that's the end of the game right there. So what have we learned here? Well, the tourist survives if there are an even number of cannibals and dies if there are an odd number of cannibals. Backward induction was really awesome here. It allowed us to come up with this result, despite the fact that this game very quickly grows pretty complex. And the last thing to note, of course, is that this book or this this game came from the book Math Puzzles, Classic Riddles, and Counting Geometry, Probability, and Game Theory. It's a cool book. Again, you can check it out by viewing the description. I hope you enjoyed this game. I hope you uh, had an opportunity here to see how backward induction is useful in ways that it might not necessarily seem initially. And I hope you liked it. And I will see you next time. Take care.